Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of the Cigar Lounge Cigar Talk Show. I'm your host, Aaron Paletta, and today we have probably the most special guest that we've ever had on this show. We have talked about him for three seasons now. He is under the uh, gnome de plume of Mr. K, but today I want to finally be able to introduce the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Bill Carolla. Oh, I suppose we can get rid of that FBI <laughs> thing over there. No, the no, no more FBI thing. We can take your voice modulation off and you're good to go. Yeah, that was bad intel. Yeah. <laughs> right? So I'm going to call you Mr. K from, for, for this, but it is Bill, uh, or brother, one it, of the two. It is, and that's such a big introduction he gave me because what he doesn't know is I plan on interviewing the interviewer. I'm not just here for my looks. It's a good thing. We wouldn't be here long. <laughs> Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. K, and he has actually been very kind, um, well, to me over the years with uh, introducing me to the upper echelon of the cigar industry, but today he brought something very, very special, which is the Padron 50th anniversary, and not only is it special, it is super special because he brought the originals, which have the red serial numbers on it. Although Johnny Five got one with the black serial numbers on it, it's still a very scrumptious, scrumptious cigar. So you want to tell a little bit about these cigars, because I, I did get a little bit of footage of the humidor okay. that it came in, which was spectacular, and we'll put that up here pretty soon. I, I would like to talk about this cigar because Aaron and I have had a lot of cigars together. But what you don't know, in the last two years, I have watched him grow from an average cigar Joe to the aficionada he is now. And he can say Nicaragua without using the R. Unlike Johnny. Nicaragua? Nicaragua, Nicaragua. there it is. <laughs> this cigar has been in my box since I bought it. And it was released in 2014. And in 2014, it was already 10-year-old tobacco. So this has sat there for 10 years, 2014. So now we're we're, 20, on. we're about 2023 now. So that's an additional nine years there. So these things are, give or take, they're about 19 years. The tobacco, at least, is about 19 years old. It is. When Aaron and I get together, you know, I kind of look at cigars a little different. I'm not going to go with that. I taste caramel, uh, floating butterfly toes. Cashews, like Johnny tastes there yeah, every single Or shoe. Or, or, or shoe, or yeah. yeah. A, a, dirty shoe. Dirty shoes. Dirty shoe. I still don't know what. Are going to talk shit about me? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, wait, wait. Oh, oh, we we oh, got to oh, get okay. money shots of you doing that. All right, all right. We'll hold off for a second. So when we smoke a cigar and we try to get together once a week, I look at cigars a little differently. One, to me, there's absolutely unsmokable cigars out there. Yeah, Gurkha. Yeah. There, there's there's a bunch to me that are just not smokable. So when we talk about cigars, we kind of have like what we call a fishing or, or a golfing cigar. And then we have one that's kind of like an everyday cigar. But this kind of cigar, the, the reason I have everyday cigars is to be able to let something like this continue to age out. And while I, picking it up every once in a while to actually enjoy what you've got. Yes. All right. Mr. K wants to crack turn. into them. Let's do the money shot so we can spark these babies up. Scrumptious. I was hoping he was going to say that. Just scrumptious. Have, actually, haven't used that word in a while. Haven't smoked anything worth saying scrumptious over. Season Well, season three already started, and I've only done two episodes, so haven't brought any opuses or padrones into this season yet. So this will be the first padrone. It is an honor to be here. It is an honor to have you. Tell him, Johnny. 
We've been trying for three seasons. He's not lying. Third one's a charm. That's it. Third season, third episode. Ooh. Three, three. We and just gotta get the other three. You just want free cigars. Who doesn't? <laughs> I know, right? I mean, no, not at all. But since uh, you're the one who did bring these and you know more about them than we do, can you please elaborate a little bit more on these cigars? Anything else you want to say about them other than they're scrumptious? Uh, other end of going into a lot of depth, the aging is really what makes us spectacular. I am a real fan of the aged cigars. So whether it's a Fuente age release, uh, it's a Padron that sat there for 10 years and then I've held it another eight, I just like that added flavor you get from it. I'm not going to get crazy with detail, but the red label signifies that it was from the original box. And as far as good cigars go, really doesn't get better. No, it doesn't. And actually, you know, Johnny can concur because we say this all the time. When you want a good Nicaraguan, Puro, Nicaraguan Puro, you come to Padron. Okay, however, we started adopting your word of the uh, a good everyday cigar, a good everyday smoke, and that's where we brought those Alvo Synchro Nicaraguans. As a matter of fact, the only reason I found out about them was because of you. I went and tracked them down, they were great. The Tatori Black Label, that's a good everyday cigar. So one of the things I actually wanna go into with you, since a lot of the stuff that I say on here, I learned from you, can you say some of your good everyday cigars? Certainly. Top five. Top five. Well, definitely like the Tatawa Black, very peppery. Every one I've ever had has been an absolute pepper bomb. Uh, Romeo, the red and white label, is another good everyday cigar. That the, was Muffin's, one of Muffin's favorites. Yeah, Muffin had a low bar. <laughs> we That's miss right, you, Dusty. We miss you, Muffins. <laughs> not here, but not gone. <laughs> not gone. Yeah, that Romeo, Romeo, um, that thing, it was, it was pretty tasty. For, for a Dominican, that was it, was, it was solid. Good, good everyday cigar. The, the Avos have that, um, what is it, that hint of Peruvian in it that you, you talk about. They do. That gives it just a little bit of sweetness, yep. which takes it up a level or two. The, uh, one of your favorites, Rocky Patel Decade. Yeah, the is Decade, that's a, that's a good one. I like the ALR second edition, that's another good one. It is. Um, My favorite is the White Label. The white, have you tried that White Label yet? Did I get you one? You probably haven't. I don't recall trying one. I thought he was gonna say you probably have. I guess I'll have to get you a, a White Label. It was good. It was a um, very creamy Nicaraguan. And since the 60th made it to number two, Number I'm two. I'm going to have to revisit that to see if that would become a good everyday smoke. I remember getting those 60s when they first came out because we were watching them. The Disciple, the White Label, and the 60 were all releasing within like a month of each other. And as soon as they came out, I tried them all. I was not blown away with that 60 when it first came out. And I bought several after that. Tried three different sizes, I believe. The 5.5 by 52, the 6.5 52, and the 6 by 60. The 6x60 smoked the best and tastes the best, but wasn't anything that I would put at number two. Although everybody who knows me knows I love Rocky Patel, but I like your ALR second edition, I would put at number two, not, not the 60, at least not yet. And that was an absolute decent cigar, the ALR. Mm -hmm. One of the things I would like to task Aaron to do, because he has this uh, Bible book for every cigar he's ever smoked, all kinds of tasting notes with them. That would, to me, be as darn near as good a cigar aficionado's top for you to go through 2022, start to finish, and say what you think your top five would have been that you've tried. Yeah, I've kind of lost some of that chasing because now I know what great cigars are. Uh, when I think of the Opus X 20th, the Oscura Aura, the Angel Share, any 1926 Padron, uh, but the 50th is its own animal. So I'm thinking you probably could pick a list as good a cigar aficionado, if not better. Yeah, um, I have a list on my computer going. I can tell you that the Renato Apex Gordo was probably 
number four on that list. And I only remember that because that was an episode that we did. Um, but I'd have to refer to that list. How about next episode you come on? I'll share my list. There you go. Because I don't because ha- I don't have it with me. And I'll go on podcast record. I, I am willing to get together with you podcast wise more often. Maybe we can do a aficionado uh, corner. That's not a bad idea, actually. <laughs> Talk about cashews and Nicaraguan tobacco. <laughs> you too. Yeah, yeah, that too. <laughs> um, you know, twenty. Don't hang on the rookie. I don't. Still learning here. You are still learning. And speaking of, how's your padrone? Speechless. I'm enjoying it to the fullest. Good. The only one to come close to me to this 50th would be the Opus X 20th. That would be hands up there. And the Royal Solomon, but again, I've not tried the new yeah. release. When they did the Royal Solomon back in the wooden box, and you got 25 in the box. Hell, it might have been 50. It's been a while. I mean, you talked about that Royal Solomon. I have never had uh, the honor of trying it. Um, would like to try the new ones if we can get our hands on some. We'll have to. You also talk about the Bahikis. I have never tried one of them either. That is the unicorn by far. To actually fall down in the States now, we can't get them here. I've got family in Canada, so every now and then I'll go up to the Habana House in Toronto and, and know I'm getting good stock because when I was in the Keys, there was so much counterfeit down yeah. there. But the Bee Heike was truly a unicorn. Uh, the only other unicorn that, that the thoughts kind of leave in my mind was the Oro Blanco Davidoff. Mm. Uh, 500 bucks a stick. I got to be terminal to be able to spend 500 bucks a stick. And I've got another Dr. J that I talk about. Him and I both have a pack. One of us gets terminal. We're getting a pair of Oro Blancos. But the Oro Blanco had a review, and it was like a 92. And You think with a, a cigar that costs that much, you get more than a 92. It would have to, it would, to spend that money to you be, you have to be 100 <laughs> or give me 100. Like, I want to know that I am for sure going to love this thing Not for 500 bucks. But then again, your favorite company in the world, um, Gurkha, has a million dollar cigar. You know, Gurkha, I went to a Gurkha event uh, just being open minded and, and asked the rep and he did recommend the one. And even the best one he recommended to me, I, I still couldn't palate. And he offered our group to come up to see their place up in Miami and was going to give us a tour. And and we turned them down. I don't hear anything. That's Bill's phone. (laughs) Hey, no Shame, shame, shame. You Uh, looked at me and I... I did look at you. Well, on the release, it didn't talk about turning my phone (laughs) off. We turn our phones off before we film. That's okay. That's okay. Um, You were saying about Gurkha... (laughs) Yeah, for whatever reason, there are... I got to turn that down. Jo- Johnny, can you grab that real quick? Oh, there we go. It took care of itself. Um, the, the Gurkhas, I think... Gurk, every cigar has their place. And unfortunately for your palate, you've already been there, done that. You've been around. you smoked everything you, you wanted to back in your day. you found what your palate likes. It just happens to be the upper echelon of the industry. However, I think that Gurkhas do have a place, like I, I talk mass amounts of shit about acid cigars, okay? And I can understand why. Right, but acids are the number one selling cigar. People like them. They're just not for my palate. I think that acids and Gurkhas and Javas and you know the, the lower end, like the bundled cigars or the brick house cigars, which shocking brick house placed on that, but I, I think those are good for the beginners. And then you will eventually graduate out of that. I mean, I started on Gurkhas, he started on Gurkhas, and they were good when I started. Huh. Until I went to that next level. I'm like, okay, I can't touch this Gurkha again. It's just not there. And then that next level became, oh, I don't want that anymore either. I, I think as you smoked them and you, your palate graduates to the next level, you will eventually get up to this. I just hope you have deep pockets because this shit ain't cheap. You graduate. Quick, quickly, quickly. You'll smoke four or five Gurkhas and be like, yeah, I don't want this no more. My first 20 years of cigar smoking was predominantly Ashton, and it was a Monarch. 
it was a consistent, steady cigar, and every now and then I'd go off reservation and do Monte Cristo for a little bit. Which, as far as the Cuban goes, a Monte Cristo to me is better than a Romeo and Julieta night and day. You gave me a Monte Cristo number two Cuban, and it was a damn fine smoke. The Cuban tobacco has such a uniqueness out of it, I'm not sure how to even coin it. I want to say it's it's the old the old world flavors before they started you know messing with this breed and crossing this and creating all these new plants i think the cuban is just back to basics it's just good solid simple tasting tobacco do you remember the commercial when the guys who eat the cereal and can't hear anything else have you ever seen that one uh, how far back are we going <laughs> uh, maybe two three years oh no as i stopped watching tv a couple years ago okay well, I'm having that moment now with this cigar. This thing is just freaking dynamic. This is better than the normal 50s as they come since it's got that extra eight years on it. Yeah. Now, I'm going to have it put up on the screen right now. I was able to take some video of the actual humidor with, um, uh, with the, the originals, but th that was both the natural and the Maduro in the, that I saw in there? Yes, because after I went through about half of the original red label, then I filled it back up with natural and tried to keep my hand out of the other red label. Gotcha, gotcha. So as you can see on the video or still seeing on the video, there is a two in there, but the humidor itself, I mean, it was just... It's gorgeous. Oh, it was. It was just looking at it Dude, it, it, yeah, but to see it in person was spectacular. And the thing is heavy as shit too. I had to bring it down. He had it upstairs. I had to bring it downstairs and then mess with the key to get it open. Dude, it was just, inside was amazing. Did you notice where the humidity elements were? I don't recall you without seeing the video. Had to pull the tray out and they were underneath. It was designed for two Bovita packs. <sighs> right, because I had to pull that. Yeah, I got it. it amazing. I mean, absolutely uh, an amazing humidor. And the fact that it's full made me uber jealous because those what are these about fifty dollars a stick i think is when, when you bought the 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 refills or yeah, whatever it was yeah so about fifty dollars six so there's what like twenty five hundred dollars worth of cigars in there there is but this is such a phenomenal freaking cigar eh? you know i've had cigars that were a hundred dollars a cigar i've had cigars that were ten dollars a cigar i'm going to tell you right now easily the best 50 bucks you'll ever spend yeah and it's not one of those ones that you just buy one you get five get 10 of them and and have them because they just get they're like fine wine they just get better with age and these things are scrumptious yes we'll bleep that <laughs> <laughs> we'll bleep that out <laughs> um i mean there was actually so oh i don't think do we ever i don't know if we ever said it on here because you're the one I heard it from, I want you to actually comment on it. Can you please explain to everybody about the Trunkador? Ah. Did I, did I ever say that before on here? I don't remember. I think so. Trunkador, this is where it came from. Please do tell. So the Trunkador. The, yes, they please. Get to the Trunkador story. But the story before the story is there is a certain cigar shop that will leave nameless. That, that there is a creature, I guess, similar to Chupacabra or the Green Man or some of those other great legendary, that if you leave your cigar in the ashtray and you leave, they'll oh. magically appear and come pick your cigar out of the ashtray yeah. and be happy as a little kid that found a candy bar and smoke the rest of it. So it's kind of scary. So, so when you leave it there, you know, I, I don't want him to get sick, but a little little lip on the end of it will give him an added flavor when he gets it. I'm going to tell you right now, if the guy that we shall leave nameless, who knows the guy who we shall leave nameless, <laughs> watches this particular episode, he's going to absolutely shit himself because he will know who you're talking about. <laughs> I think everyone and in a certain area. I have, I have never seen anything like it at this particular uh, non-mentionable cigar shop. I've never seen anybody put out a cigar, and then as soon as they get up, the guy comes over, snips it, lights it again, and smokes it. Now, I know he's got a tight budget, and when I've got in there, I've given him Opus X 20s, I've given him whatever I've brought in for the time, and he enjoys those too, and that's where that two, $3 stick does have a home. 
now to the truncador. Now, I, I don't want to mention this guy's name, so we'll call him Bald-Headed Jerry for now. His name might actually be Jerry, but that, that just adds to the story. Bald-Headed Jerry is the name we're going with. And sometimes when I make reservations for a restaurant, I use that name in case I actually don't come back. <laughs> They're not upset with me. That's your gnome de plume? Bald-Headed yeah, Jerry. Bald-Headed Jerry. Go figure why. Bald-Headed Jerry wins a cigar basket where he gets like 50 cigars. Now, I've heard of Tupperdors, I've heard of Igladors, but Jerry used the Trunkador. He is from that generation that, you know, the Bonnyvilles, the bigger cars. Yep. He, you could fit three bodies in the trunk. Yeah, like Uncle Buck. Like yeah. the Cadillac. Yeah, like the yeah. Caddy, yeah. So Jerry, when he got the cigars, he put them in his trunk, and they stayed there, and they stayed there, and they stayed there. So I started telling him he had a Trunkador and what a magical thing that is. But when you're talking about junk cigars to start with, you know, it's not going to hurt them. Yeah, but you imagine what that tastes like? Did you ever smoke no. one out of there? No. No, I did not. Now, <laughs> uh, and a plus for bald-headed Jerry when he does have a cigar with me, because he is a brother of the leaf, he'll tell me straight up, give me the cheapest, nastiest thing you have, because I want to know the difference. And I'm like, okay, it's my nature to give the best of what I have in my box. At least he's honest, though. At least he's telling you flat out, I'm not going to know. Don't waste your good stuff on me. Yeah, yeah. So I will give him. You might as well just hold on to some great fillies. Yeah. Um, before we get any further, Johnny, can you tell me what's in these Padrones? I bet you can already guess. Seems how you're asking. <laughs> <laughs> well, Johnny normally, t he normally tells, you know, what the blend is. Can you? It's Nicaragua. Nicaragua. Every bit of it, from one end to the other. Nicaraguan tobacco. They're pretty guarded at what regions. They're like Opus. You know, when, when you make such a high-grade cigar, you don't have to tell people what's in there. Yeah, and, you know, for someone like me, though, with my books, it, it makes it very irritating because I do like to give as much information about the cigar that I'm smoking as possible. So <clears throat> in my reviews, <clears throat> there's always, um, there's always this, the story, <clears throat> whatever I can find about it, where the, the tobacco comes from. But when you get to Fuente and Padron, my, my stories get pretty short. It's Dominican or it's Nicaraguan. Yeah. Period. Sorry, can't tell you anymore. Because I don't know. And I would say without exception, there is no better Dominican than an Opus X. Even a standard production Opus is okay, but they still need to sit down for six months. There's just something about the way they're coming to market, and I also feel that about <coughs> everything. The only exception ever to that was that Royal Solomon. As it aged, and I still have three of them left, but they're 10 years probably at this point, they blended together. You don't get that single profile, and that's why I think we have to try the Royal Solomons. Yeah, so I actually, two questions that I have for you now out of what you just said. One, it's, it's not more of a question, a statement, back me up if you can. Um, when you buy a box of cigars, always try one or two as soon as you open it to see what it is you're smoking before they marry together. Because there was one, and I want you to say what it was, but there was one you said it had three distinct thirds. And then as you aged it, it married into one. That is absolutely the Royal Solomon. It, it was a great big stick. And when they were fresh, you started off at the end was very typical Davidoff. It was is a nice woody. When you got to the middle third, it really became like a fresh grass, but in a good way, not in a bad way. And the bottom third was a little sweetness like a light cane sugar. And as these aged out, they married together. Now I age quite a bit and I don't have them mixed. I have my David Off's aging in a David Off box, I have my Opus in an Opus box. So I try to marry like ones together so you don't pick up any of that funky side taste. Right. Now, <clears throat> on the Davidoffs, he actually is the one that talked me into, well, actually wasn't talking me into, it was, I'm getting you a box, here's how much. Was able to get the Year of the Rabbit. Uh, holy shit, just a fantastic blend. It had like seven or eight different tobacco leaves in it. And he, he texts me, he goes, hey, I'm getting, 
I'm getting three boxes of these. One of them is for you. I told my wife about it. She said, happy birthday, which she has exquisite taste in cigars, by the way. And it's, it's just one of them things you can walk in and blindly purchase and not be regretting that in any way. Would you agree with that statement? When it comes to certain cigars, I'm specifically talking about the Davidoff special release. Absolutely, I would agree 100%, but those are all far and few between. Davidoff's Zodiac releases, every one has been a home run, every single one. There's a lot of Davidoff that I just don't care for. Uh, and I've even tried the 702, some of the different blends. When Davidoff is spot on like their Royal series, they have a, a, about the best blend out there. And that Royal Solomon was a thing of legends. And that's why I keep thinking we got to try the new ones or maybe even do the old ones and the new ones. Just to see the difference. Times. To see the difference of them. Now, unfortunately, you'll be the only one of the two of us that will know what the original tasted like before the third's married. But at least you'll be able to guide that conversation along. It is still a damn good stick. It's just not as good as it was. And to say that with aging, that's like backwards. The concept of aging is to make it a better cigar. Right, to improve it. Not to take back. But what did you think of that ESG? Because this man gave me, he had two left, so I felt to, to say I was honored was a gross understatement. Honored that he gave me one. He only had two, and they had been sitting in there, what, you said 10 years? They were in my 10-year box. I know what I tasted. I have my review. What did you taste? It, it was that was the best cigar I've ever smoked, to be honest. Period? Across the board, bar none? Period. Wow. Period. The B Heike that, that I roughly alluded on, as a unicorn, it was a decent smoke. It was a big rig gauge. It had the uh, typical Cuban pigtail on the end, but it didn't floor me. Was it worth smoking? Absolutely. Was it worth 100 bucks? No. No, it just right. wasn't. But sometimes rare doesn't equal good, as we found out with, and sorry, Carlos, with the, the rare, pinks. rare pink. That cigar drastically underperformed for the price point it was at. Uh, he did have the rarity, because I've spent up to two years chasing a Padron release, Purple Rain. Yeah, the purple, yeah, I remember that one. Two bloody years it took to find that. And there's others I'm sure I won't see. And as they do those charity boxes every year, those are also when they mix the blends up, really outstanding. They did one called a Black Orchard that was about a little bigger than a pencil. It was almost jet black. Damn thing burned an hour and a half. It, it was just a real treat. You can never go get another one, but it was a hell of a treat. Um, yeah, so those rare pinks, um, I had last, well, we already had this year's blend. So I had the last, last two years of blends. The Happy Ending, which the name alone made me want them. <laughs> um, and then this one, which was the Signature 1960 series, I think is what it was called. Good. Uh, if you would have slapped a regular band on it, I would have I would have told you it was just a mid a mid range. Open, Short uh, story. Yeah, I, the Hemingway. Exactly. I, I would have told you it was a mid range. Fuente, yeah, it's your favorite. Yeah, uh, a mid range Fuente. Um, Hemingway is probably one of my favorite everyday sticks. Yeah, he does love them Hemingways. Huh. They're they're just they have such a great unique taste. Well, you know, <laughs> we talk about taste, but you were mentioning that pencil where it was the size of a pencil but still burned for an hour and a half. That, that purple rain, I believe that took a little over two hours for us to get through that day that we tried them. I have never smoked, and when it comes to Fuentes, as, as this is what I'm referring to, I've never smoked a cigar that is as tightly packed as that and had the cleanest draw that those things get. Like you, would, you would squeeze that thing and go, dude, this is going to be clogged as all shit, and it's not. It's as close to perfection as you can get. If when, I'm not mistaken, aren't there only two or three rollers that do all the opus? I believe you're right. The opus line, I'm pretty sure there's only a couple that they are trusted to do this. So any opus you get comes from like one, one of two or three people, period. And, and I'm sure they are at the top of their game. I, I, bet, I bet they are <laughs> because, I mean, just, it's just a fantastic smoke. The 20th is, is hands down my absolute favorite. And I think I've cleared about 11 of those off of you, I think, in uh, hog trades. Hog trades. Hog trades. We can start hog trading some Padrones next. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I'm getting down to maybe only 60. Oh, oh 
Oh, geez. Well, you need a panic point, and that's it. What's your panic point? 10? 50. Oh, 50? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I can understand when, you, when you're pulling something that, especially that you can't get ever again, the red labels, meaning what I'm talking about now, I, I get it. Because when they're gone, they're gone. And that's kind of how I feel about those, now that I had a whole box of those um, Zodiacs. I'm a little careful with them now because I know that that particular rabbit, because you know the rabbit will come around again, but it'll be a different blend. I will never get this again. And then, you know, you were kind enough to let me try that tiger, which first off, that looked like veneer wrapped around there. It did. It was absolutely insane. But the flavor, it was, it was just special. And when I got done, I shed a little tear. I was very sad because it was the only one I got. But now moving forward, I will make sure that I always get a box too enjoy for myself every year that is a box that's worth buying i now concur with that statement um you don't normally pull what i pull like flavor wise but just for shits what are you tasting <sighs> besides perfection i am tasting a damn good aged cigar uh, i really don't know what to comp aged tobacco when you start at the age reserve uh, at least two years age before they ship it just has such a I hate to even call it earthy. There's just another element to the cigar when they start to age. We've also been blessed to have a couple that had plume on, and I wish I knew the magic story to what makes plume. Because I could have cigars in a box for 15, 20 years, never get plume on them. Well, if I remember correctly, I do have pictures of that, and if I can find it, I'll have it thrown up on the screen. It was an Opus, uh, or was it the Destino El Siglo? I'll look through my pictures. <laughs> anyway, um, 23 years old is what it was. And I, re I remember because Muffins was supposed to join us that night. Boy, did he lose out on that. That thing was something special. And you know, and, and while you're talking about plume, I want to clarify the difference between mold and plume. If you've got big blotchy spots <laughs> on your cigar. Like that, a cloud. Like a, if the blotchy, sp that is not plume. That is mold. But if you have what looks like a light dusting of powdered sugar, that's your plume. How you get it? It's kind of see-through. Huh? It's kind of see-through. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like Every, cheesecloth, yeah. in a way. Every one I've ever had with plume has also, to me, had a sweetness to it. Yes, it does. It has a little, like, like sugar. Sugar cone. Yeah, like yeah. sugar, only, you know, not sugar dipped, like some of that other nasty shit. But, I mean, it, w it was something special, and it did add a touch of sweetness to it. Um, I believe that was a nice summer day. We sat out on your front porch. It was... What a place to have a cigar. It was like my dad always did. Perfect. It was perfect. Um, I had so many questions for you. Might have to do many episodes because some of them are flying by me now. One of the other thing is we interview the interviewer. No, no, uh, no. I have two boxes that are cigar spas that are nothing but aging boxes. And I've spent years going through trying them and they had to be something special or, or at least over and every day to get into the long-term aging boxes and i think i've got 23 or 25 different ones was five deep in the one box and then i have another box of, of longer ones but i did bequeath to Aaron an, an entire row he he was worthy to receive it i never See, thought honored. i would give anyone a row out of my aging box honored and i watched him unload them too now, you know, it's not like Marvin Shankin's boxes, but I think I'm starting to get some good depth with what I've got going on. You do, and I've been able to see, uh, which is a sight in itself, you almost need to buy a ticket for a tour of his humidors, because um, they're special. Even, even the TV stand table, I'm gonna call it cabinet, is humidified. Not just the humidors that are inside of it, the actual cabinet is, so he's got double humidification. That's how much this man cares for his cigars. And the strange thing about that particular cabinet, and we've got three different pieces that are Sheboygan Bay, they had found 100-year-old logs up in Lake Superior, and they caught them on the bottom of the lake. They floated them up, and they made a furniture run with leaded glass and just has that true antiqueness as tight as the grain of the wood is. And that piece alone is a beautiful piece. No, it is. Um, I, I've seen in these... Uh, humidors and the one humidor uh, I thought the man was gonna kill me and I didn't realize I didn't have the gloves on and I actually reached in and touched one and you could see this man's eyes turn red 
like let yeah. go of my fucking cigar. <laughs> Thought he was gonna leap across, but that's that's how much he, he didn't want the oils, and he even uses his white gloves to rotate them and, and do his thing. It's, it's impressive to say the least. Every month I, I open all my boxes for exactly 10 minutes and I check the humidor, humidity level on it and also look to make sure nothing bad's happening. Because I've been doing this a long time and every now and then, I think twice the whole time I've doing it, I found a little something I didn't want growing in the box. So of course you have to break the box apart, you have to clean it, you have to get out the ones with the mold. If you don't catch that mold, instead of losing four cigars, you could lose 50. And didn't you years back lose some stuff down in Florida? I did. Florida's such a unique animal. I made the rookie mistake of leaving a box down there over the summer. Our unit was air conditioning, it was humidified, but the humidity level in the Keys was so damn high when I came back that I had a farm going on. It wasn't a little mold, it, it was a farm. And what did you lose? Those were opuses, weren't they? Not, there were some opuses, but not many. Now, as I go back and forth, I will take with me cigars down, and when I come back for the season, I'll bring cigars back. Takes one time to learn to never do that again. Yes, except bald-headed Jerry with his trunk and door. I, he probably would have smoked those. He, would, he, I, he might still be. I, I will ask him about that, and I'll have him watch the episode so he knows he's famous. Bald-headed Jerry, you are famous. We should get him on here, too. The trunk and door segment. He's a level friend I consider you, and there aren't many of them. I don't get together with him as often as I'd like. Just a crazy, crazy twist to how I met him in Florida. I meet him in Florida, and he's from Greenville. Isn't that funny, though? I did a lot of that when I was out in Las Vegas. I'd, I'd meet people from Pittsburgh, from Youngstown. I met one guy from Boardman. I'm like, dude, you're just t 20 minutes away from me. It's amazing to run into people like that in a completely different area. And another good example of that, I did a big smoke in Miami the one time, and being me, I had to get the VIP so I could run in and grab all the cigars before the lines got there. And that was neat, because literally that extra VIP ticket, I had every cigar in that place in my bag within 20 minutes, and I was outside smoking. And that was a record day. I smoked five cigars that day. Then I got back to the hotel room, and I spread all this crap out. And I'm just grinning ear to ear. And uh, Like a little kid. K takes a couple pictures. A cigar is a social thing, so I'm looking around, and Miami people, you can tell them. You can tell them by their damn shoes. Uh, I mean, you really can. Yeah. Even ugly Miami people are beautiful. And I see this big guy <laughs> sitting at a table alone, and that was a hard place to get a chair. So I asked him if he minded company, and I came over and had a cigar with him. But wouldn't you know if he wasn't from Sharon? And he also goes to Penn, Ohio on a regular basis. Wow. So I'm sitting in Miami having a cigar with a stranger I'd never met in the world only to find out he is from back home where I'm from. I, I mean, I, when I was down in Charlotte a couple months ago visiting my sister. We were down there and I went into uh, Burner's was the name of the cigar shop. Great place, actually. Been and to Burner's. You've been to Burner's? I have. That's actually where I got that blue ST DuPont lighter at. Okay. It was a great, great place. Um, in the parking lot was a guy that had a, you know those license plate rims that you can put on there? It's got words and stuff on it. It said, Ben Bissett, Chevrolet. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, I'm like, are you from Mercer? He goes, no, I'm from uh, a little bit away. I'm in Volant. I'm like, Ben Bissett is in Mercer. He's like, oh, you're from my dunk? Dude, I live in Mercer. It's, it's funny how you run into people like that. It is, it is. It's, it's funny as hell. Now, because I normally do give notes, I'm gonna give a few here. Uh, I am getting leather. I'm getting a nice blast of almonds. I did have a little bit of spice at the very beginning, but it quickly died off. There's a, a, a nice roll of black pepper going on in here. A mild hint of cashews? no cashews, uh, licorice. Dirty uh, shoe. <laughs> star anise, um, and, a, and a mild touch of figs. I'll concur with you with the leather and the black pepper. Honestly, I don't have as detailed as palette as you do by any means. Uh, I just can tell when it's a damn good cigar compared to an everyday cigar. I keep it simple. Yeah, and, and it is a damn good cigar. But you know, people know that I like to pull flavors out, so that's why I had to pull the flavors out. Draw is impeccable. Uh, I've never had a clogged Padron, ever. Absolutely, and the 1926 is a step below these, but it's also one hell of a stellar no, cigar. It is, it's badass. I believe that's coming out of the gate with five years behind the leaf. Yes. I believe it is. And the 64 anniversaries are also using five-year. Okay, that I did not yeah. know. Those are also using five-year. Um, 
which right below the 26 is a 64. You just can't go wrong with those two. If you can't get your hands on the 50th, the 64 or the 26, go with those. I mean, even, you know, the 1000 series of Padron is a good entry level cigar, but it's better than most. Never tried one, I'll take your word for it. I have one just for you. <laughs> because over, I think over these past few years, although you might not enjoy it too much, he actually does try stuff when I give it to him. Because I, I, I want to see if, you know, what he really thinks about some things. Absolutely. And whenever you're offered a cigar, it's only gracious to take it. Uh, the only time I never did smoke one I was given, well, I was given a machine rolled one. Oh. Meet the guy for the first time. I pull out the best of what I got. We sit and have a cigar. And the next day, out of the kindness of heart, he brings me one of his favorites. I just couldn't do it. I can't do a machine-made cigar. I, yeah. I, I can't get it down. Yep. And there's no sense because, you know, you're going to try and you're going to get that nauseous feeling. It really doesn't come down to the cost. It is the quality of the cigar. Yep. These people are, are masters with what they do. I mean, absolutely masters. I did meet George uh, by accident at the 50th, and I won't give much opinion about him, but his cigar is top notch. The guy there that I got to talk about, because this is the next Drew, Jonathan Drew right here. Jonathan See? Drew at Big Miami, he was a freaking rock star. He understood what it was to promote his product. All the other tobacconists there might have had a line of four or five deep. They had 20, 25 people deep in their line, and they were working them, man. Yep. They even had a box there of some cigars they hadn't released. And I watched the guy in front of me go, hey, can I have one of theirs? He went, sure. Open the box game. So what do I do when I get up there? I go, hey, can, can I, I have, have one, one of them? And I still have that cigar laid up, aging, and they signed the box for me. They knew what it was about. For him to come from a, a newspaper stand in New York and develop the powerhouse he did, the flavor that I, I, I despise on every possible level made, I'm a purist. I, I want nothing but tobacco in there. So that sent me on the journey of trying to find a Drew Estate cigar that was one that met my palate. And, and there is the, one. The Nortino, all day long, yep. the special is just even a couple notches up. Yep, and because of that recommendation, I bought a box, never having tried them before, just bought a box, and they did not disappoint. So I would definitely agree with you on that. And you got the uh, limited or the special? I got the specials. Best of the best. I had a boatload of questions that could take us four hours deep into this. Yep. However, I would love to see you back on some other episodes. So before we wrap this up and finish, do you have anything else you would like to say for this episode, would like to say to anybody or me or Dickhead over there, because I'm, I'm hoping that you'll come back on a few other episodes with us. I didn't see Dustin here or, or Muffins. <laughs> well, uh, Johnny's okay. Mr. Nicaragua. 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 My main thing I want to leave everyone with is keep your eyes on this man because he has really taken it to the next level. A lot of people can smoke a cigar and enjoy a cigar, but to be completely obsessive, compulsive with it is a special talent. And he has done the things he need to do to get to that level of earning the titles that he's getting. And I just think there's great places he's going to go. I appreciate that, sir. You gonna say something back there? No comment. I was going to, but uh, you know what? I'll say it. He does that with everything he does. It's because I love life. That's a quality. And I got one life to live, so I gotta do it, man. Something I learned from my dad. I would definitely say you're a great A asshole, and I enjoy every minute. Awesome. He's good with that, too. I'm good with that, too. <laughs> anyway, uh, I, I thank you sincerely for coming on, Johnny. Thanks for leaving your broken truck to come and make sure this episode went through. Um, to, to be honest, I only came here to see Bill. <laughs> I was hoping it was for the 50th, but that'll work. Hey, that is true. Now, he did say that on the way down. He's like, I really just want to go talk to Bill. Perfect. Anyway, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to finish enjoying our smokes here. Thank everybody for watching. Mr. K, thank you for coming on. I hope to see you uh, a couple more at the very minimum. Johnny, thank you, everybody. We'll see you later. Enjoy your smokes. It was a pleasure.